It's 1939, and the nation celebrates as we welcome in another king, the third in as many years. Princess Elizabeth married the Duke of Edinburgh, and the Royal Mile opened the roller coaster to celebrate the launch of the new Spitfire plane, which I'm sure will never be needed. Uh, how's that new German friend of yours? Oh, you guys, welcome to 1939, and I'm sure this is going to be quite a quiet year. Nothing major is going to happen. We'll just get through into 1940 and just be done with it. And the park's about to have its first ever PR nightmare, or happy accident, depending on how you look at it, because they've added a roller coaster that's themed to these brand new, technologically advanced fighting planes called Spitfires. What could possibly go wrong? Let's just be grateful Twitter doesn't exist in 1939. <laughs> but, Chacho, I hear you cry. Where is this coaster? I don't see it. Well, that's because we're on the wrong side of the park, my friends. And we need to be looking at the other side, where, um... Oh. It's also not there. So, I wanted this series to feel like it's actually developing the park. Now, what that means is we firstly need to clear an area conveniently marked out for me and then 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 we actually need to put the coaster in oh look there it is <laughs> guys does that feel developed enough for you does it does it <laughs> yes welcome to the park the flying turns so this is a coaster that does exist in this time uh, there are not many reference images around for it though um because all of the original flying turns no longer exist the only one we've got to go by is the flying turns that I, I don't know how if I'm going to say this right it's either going to be Knobles or Nobles we would say Nobles here in the UK but I bet you guys over on the other side of the pond say Knobles right so we'll say Knobles anyway flying turns is the only one and that's because that was made according to originally repurposed plans um so it's the closest we're going to get to any kind of historical accuracy so yes there is no time lapse for this one because this took nine hours to build you're not going to get a time lapse out of nine hours. But what we do have is a finished coaster. We have a station and we come into the uh, the first curve, which is on a slight decline uh, because the trains need to go into the lift hill. Uh, and then we go into the lift hill. I don't like the control of these lift hills when you're building the in-planet coaster because you are stuck. Even with track limits disabled, you're stuck to 12 meter sections. So that means that your top of your lift hill is a bit jank. But hey, 1939 i don't care uh so <laughs> we go into the first uh, the first um lift hill and first drop into the first run uh, now i wanted to do this because firstly knobles one does it so you know precedent is set but also i didn't want to have the coaster coming into this area which if i was facing the station this way it would do and then facing the station the other way didn't feel right so what i wanted to do was have it as a turnaround so then it comes into the second lift hill here uh, and then it comes into uh, the sneaky pass stuff here now the thing to remember with these flying turns is they don't have ups and downs they they are just a solid down and they are nothing but helixes but they are really fast sharp tightly packed helixes so uh, we come into like this figure of eight section and in fact there's a lot of figure of eights i found with all of the flying turns stuff of the, of the imagery and whatever that is, is available out there uh, so yeah so you've got all of these troughs that come around this way it comes into another snake comes into this way and they, they go under themselves a lot because they reuse the structure of themselves a lot so it makes it a little bit more uh, structurally integral. Uh, and then it comes this way. You can't see it because I do need to do tidying up and stuff in the area. But it, I wanted it to feel like we actually needed to clear an area to put this in. Uh, and then it comes around this way and into the final break run. I've chosen three trains for this one. Now, uh, I am toying with the idea that actually in 1939, these probably would only be one car trains. They wouldn't have coupled them together yet. But this is Planet Coaster. And we have to deal with what Planet Coaster gives us. So I've just chosen chained trains three trains uh, and they uh, that would be absolutely fine um this is block sectioned to make it work uh, but it doesn't have to be and it's timed so it makes it work but again it doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be so that's the coaster as it's sitting at the top let's go ahead and pull this together and hopefully this week i've put the right music in the right places see what happens suck it and see <laughs>
Oh, you guys, this is way harder than I thought. I'm doing my absolute best here, but there is just no documented stuff anywhere about these coasters from the 1930s. I mean, there's plenty of listings for Bartlett and Miller's version. There's Riverview Park, Palisades, Coney Island, Forest Park, Lakeside Park, but there's just no surviving detail that tells us what these were like back in the 1930s, particularly if we look inside the station here. I am flying, forgive the pun, blind. Like, this is ridiculous. Knobles gives us some clues about what they would have been like and of course we've got the Mac versions of the modern day but from the 1930s there's absolutely nothing and I mean these coasters all have one thing in common they're all gone by the 70s because they've all burnt down so maybe we don't get attached to this one and maybe I might just be willing to take the L on this one this week and luckily I'm working in a relatively small area so even though it doesn't look like a lot has changed there is a lot that has gone on and this station oh this has been the biggest part of the work, I tell you. So, uh, let me talk to you about this. So, the lattice work on here, it's not perfect. I do not proclaim to even pretend that it's perfect. But, I wanted this to feel like a winter garden because this is in this part of the uh, part of the park. Uh, it's in the nature area part. So, it felt like it needed to sit into its surroundings. It's also themed around the Spitfire. So, this is the first time that maybe we're starting to dabble with the idea of theming, as particularly as we, you know, the, all of these flying turns coasters were all themed around planes. So I wanted this to feel a little bit like a hangar. Uh, so that's what we've got here, a winter garden, aeroplane hangar. <laughs> that's what we're going for here. Now the lattice work is all hydro themes. I don't know what I'm going to do when I have to do the theme makers free uh, <laughs> park. It's just going to be ridiculous but it's all hydro beams and it looks amazing. It would all be white because it's a winter garden um, and yeah it's all open and it's all lovely. I like how this is. It was just a pain in the backside to pull together because it's so intricate and so ugh. Now this fencing style uh, it's very much taken from the inspiration that I took this whole station. So this is from Krug Park. It's their Big Dipper. We don't talk about that because it looks like it was quite a nasty little accident. And uh, we don't talk about the coaster, but the station is perfect for a Chacho ripoff. Uh, so that's what I've done. And this fencing is exactly the same. I love this idea of this fencing. It's just... it's. I say it's original. It's 1930, right? So well, it's 1939. Uh, so... Yeah, is it really that original? But for 1930, this is absolutely perfect. It's that it's that influence of uh, Art Deco style that we've got going on that we're trying to put into this park. So it, Art Deco is now starting to become a thing, and so we're now going to start to put all of this into uh, into action. I wanted the idea of the entrance and exit to be down uh, the same side. I did originally have it uh, on the one side and the other, and then you would exit this side, and then there would be a bridge here. Uh, maybe in the future we'll retrofit the ride, or maybe there's going to be a new coaster that takes on this station, and that's how that would be. But when I was looking at all the images of the flying turns and coasters of the 30s, uh, they don't actually have established queue lines. We've talked about this before. Uh, Planet Coaster requires us to have an established queue line. But actually... Uh, good old Brits, we'll just queue for anything and we will just stand behind a person not knowing what we're queuing for. So what would have happened in this in this day and age, they would have actually created um, a bit of an area for people to queue, but it wouldn't be an established queue as we know it in a theme park today. So that's what this is all about. It's relatively short and again, it would be uh, engineered again. Uh, for later years when the park becomes ridiculously busy. I imagine the queue would probably come down here and into the into the playground area, but we're not getting rid of stuff just yet. We are expanding, so that's why we've got this. You know, just sort of like queue on your own on your own terms. Uh, inside the station, I've talked about that for far too long. Um, so inside the station, we've got the wood that's been now been put down. So we actually have a, a bit of a floor and I've made the station longer than the actual in-game station. Partly so I can make this symmetrical and partly because I wanted to do that. So that's what I've done here. I, I need to put clutter and stuff in here. I need to find out what the inside of the station was. I need to do something with it. But as I said in the intro to this section, I am completely flying blind with this station. But hey, it looks all right from inside here, doesn't it? Uh, the underside of the roof is going to look pretty cool. Um, so yeah <laughs> and I mean swoopy roofs were a thing back in the 1930s as it turns out this is not new uh, and actually they would support their own structure quite nicely so um, yeah I just put the slats and stuff along here as well so it actually follows the contour uh, of the actual roof itself so 
quite like this station, you know. I quite like it. It's very, it gives the Winter Garden vibe that's needed. Uh, over here then, I have put the maintenance area in. Now, in 2023, we would make sure this has got vehicular access and it would have some kind of a road and stuff to it. But no, this is 1939. This does not exist. So what would happen is access to this shed would be by either this little catwalk that I've put in, or it would be via the actual catwalks of the coaster. You would walk from the station along the catwalk up to the shed. You wouldn't have a specific dedicated uh, road, but it, it is a shed. Remember, you wouldn't have necessarily have cranes or anything heavy lifting equipment. You would just carry a toolbox and you'd be done here. And then the trains would get wheeled in here. And then you just do what you need to do to the trains and off you go. So this maintenance area doesn't need to be intense. It doesn't need to be any more than this. It just needs cluttering out now with some stuff uh, that I'm going to put in here. But I did want to make sure that it was in the side of the brake run. Uh, I wasn't originally going to include one. But I actually changed my mind. I thought, no, this does uh, this does need one after all. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've done. And it would just be a case that they would actually push the trains. This wouldn't need any kind of um, mechanism or anything to make this work. They would literally push the train back into the uh, back into the maintenance shed. Now, I did originally uh, have this brake run on uh, an incline or a decline, but actually I decided to make it flat because it felt like that's where they would service trains and stuff, so that makes perfect sense. Uh, then you just have the decline here instead. So I have also uh, doled down the colour of the track. Um, it's now a, it's now got more of a grey to it rather than the bright yellow. Uh, it felt like the bright yellow was probably a little bit too bright. It felt too modern. Whereas this would be uh, wood that's been treated, but possibly not treated uh, at the same time. And I've also just done a little bit of terrain work on the outside as well, just to make the terrain feel a little bit more natural. Yes, we're putting it into the terrain, and yes, we have cut bits out to put the coaster in. Of course, that's always going to happen. That's always been the thing with engineering. Um, but I just wanted to make the terrain feel a little bit more um, more natural. And then I've also put an evacuation platform along here with a concrete wall because that's kind of what we would we would expect. Uh, and then there's a staircase here. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, the catwalk that runs up to the station here. So this doesn't need to be, as I say, any more than this. I mean, uh, unlike the, the uh, wooden coast that we've got the other side of the park, which has got a little bit of like... Uh, landscaping and stuff to it this is very much in the middle of the forest now i know that i do need to put the forest and stuff back in around the outside here i've always said that that's tomorrow me's problem well it's now tomorrow so what i'm going to do in the next bit is actually just put the forest in so it, it sits within this forest area i'm also um going to put some of the trees back in as well uh, as if the trees had always been there so let's uh, let's go ahead and do that right so i uh, just need to talk about this bit and then i'll stop waffling i promise um so i wanted it to be a bit of a plaza area at the top here um as you know i, I love doing my plazas anyway but it felt like this would be a plaza and then it would have this grand staircase that leads up wheelchair access disabled access and stuff it doesn't exist yet it's 1939 uh, so we don't need ramps we will do in the future we will need to come back and retrofit it uh, but we don't in 1939 because you know we're too busy focusing on a war let alone uh, what, <laughs> what we're going to do in our theme parks um so i've tried my best with the pathing and stuff they're going to clip through the clip through the stairs but i don't care um and I just need to find a way of dealing with the um, the end of the gravel and stuff here and then be done with it. So this is where we are sitting from the top. I am going to go and finish this. See you in a minute.
Oh yeah, you guys, the user turns are flying. Welcome to the world, Spitfire. Of course it's going to be called Spitfire, what else would it be called? I mean, the world's about to turn to crap, so we need a fun name at least. But no, seriously, if you do want to change the name, let me know what your other name, alternative name would be in the comments below. We'll pull it to the vote, all the usual stuff. I haven't forgotten about the other ones, I know I need to do them. I've not been very well, so we'll round them all up and we'll do them in one go, right? Uh, but hey, this is what we've come up with, this is how it's looking from the top. And guys, I have said this before and I'm going to say this again, building in 1939 is just so weird there's nothing to build like it almost feels like cheating i mean i'm not complaining it makes everything so much quicker but it can't be a good watch for you guys because it's just devoid of any detail it's really really weird like if this was a park that was stuck in time with a history as opposed to what we're doing where we're developing it through time this would have all sorts of stuff in 2023. It would have all of your keep out signs, your don't die fencing, your station clutter, your catwalk clutter, your lift hill clutter, your lift hill light. You know, like there's so much that's missing. And I managed to find some pictures of uh, Rocky Point Park and their bobsled coaster that they've got. Honestly, there is nothing on the lift hill. There is nothing on the catwalks. There's nothing in the station. It's just a wooden building. It's like as I said, it just feels like cheating. And even, is it you, Euclid? You slip, I don't know how to say it. Euclid Beach? They had lights all along the course of their bobsled cloister. And I think that's actually the reason it might have burnt down. Um, or at least it's defunct. But I didn't want to do that here. This is not that kind of park. It, would, uh, it wouldn't have nighttime operations and that sort of stuff. Because it would close and it wouldn't be, cl it wouldn't be open over the winter or anything. So, honestly, guys, it feels like I'm cheating i keep saying it like even commentary is difficult because i'm just like is this it like the guys are you gonna actually gonna watch this is this even decent but hey this is the station this is what i wanted it to be and of course because it's celebrating spitfire i'm using the red white and blue from union flag um i put some bunting and stuff out just to you know give it a bit of detail but yeah this this it's all right. It's a station. It does what it needs to do. It doesn't need to be any more than this. And that's the theme of the series. Uh, inside the station, then, what I have done is I have just put some clutter and stuff around because I felt bad. I wanted to just put something in the station, if only to make it feel a little more alive. So here we go. This is what we've got. A couple of... Uh, couple of um, uh, stuff around and of course the loading platforms and whatever I did copy across the ride operator booth from the other coaster it felt like that might be like a consistent thing that we're going to do she's very happy she's loving it look at her yeah <laughs> modern clothes for 1939 though love a bit ahead of your time um, yeah so anyway I thought I'd, I'd copy it across because that's what it, they would do and then these lights I was like looking at how uh, winter gardens and stuff do their lighting and it's kind of like very much hanging from the ceiling like this so this is uh, this is what i've done we've got that low level lighting uh, and then i just put some decorations around and then the belongings bins and that's it it's all roller coaster stations in 1939 had or especially this type of roller coaster station had like i keep looking at this and i'm like i love the design but it just doesn't feel complete because I can't use any of the 2023 stuff. It's really weird. Uh, but what I have done, though, is put some uh, strip lighting along the outside of the actual perimeter. And then the same down here. This did exist in 1939. I have seen this in practice. Uh, so I wanted to do that. And then this is the new area. Now, you did see me put down uh, the windowsill, the firehouse windowsill uh, sidewards and created a bit of a like a um, stone plaza but that just didn't feel right when I got to doing the final touches so what I've done is I've actually just put all of the gravel and stuff back down and it now just opens up the area and it feels like it's it's a new open area too it now feels a little bit more consistent than it did before uh, there's the stairs there's no railings in 1939 I checked that out too like, guys, everything I've researched about 1939, it just goes against everything I always do in a park, and it's just so, so, so weird. I mean, it still looks cool, but we're going to need to go back and retrofit so much stuff. So much stuff. It's going to be unreal. Um, so then all I've done here is I've just put some flower beds and stuff along here just to sort of kit it out. I didn't want to bring the curbing and stuff around this way because it, it doesn't fit there right it doesn't feel like that would be consistent they would just develop this area and then uh, and then be done with it so as we're walking down uh, this way down towards the lift hill we come down into the uh, the little shack area again i just put some clutter on here just to make it feel alive uh, and then we come into the lift hill again like i say 
Nothing on the lift, Joel. No lights, no nothing. <sighs> it's weird. It really, really is. Uh, but then we come around into the into the figure of eight turnaround, uh, and then we come into the uh, second lift, Joel. Now, what I did notice on the original... Um, Oh, damn it, it doesn't quite work. Uh, what I noticed on the original uh, flying turns coasters is that they have these, like, catch runners where the train would come around this way and it would catch into a runner so it then gets fed into the lift chain here. So I, I have just included those, but of course you've just seen they don't actually work in Planet Coaster, but it's fine. They're there, they're representative, and it's the one thing that I can include from the 1930s. It's one minor detail that I can put in if I can't put anything else in. <laughs> Uh, and then we come up the lift hill this way, and then we come round into the figure of eight, and then it just snakes its way back down, uh, all of the way this way, into the final brake run. And again, there's no custom supporting needed on this one. They support themselves. They're not very tall coasters. They tend to be uh, helped by the terrain and stuff around them, so... It is what it is. Like, it doesn't need... it doesn't need any more. It's just so weird. Uh, and then it comes round into this uh, final section here. Again, you've got... That one does kind of work, actually. So I'm kind of pleased with that one. So you've got this runner again, and it feeds it into uh, feeds it into the final break run. Inside here has had a little bit of touching up work done. Uh, so I've just put a couple of fences in, a couple of um, floorboards, and st whoops, floorboards and stuff down. Bit of clutter going on. Uh, but again, nothing too heavy, because this building is very, very shack-like. There's not like much going on in this at all and that's by design it's you know that's just how it is it's just a, a, a like a maintenance area where they would fix stuff up it's nothing too uh, nothing too intense about it what i did do though was i continued the flooring along this way it felt like it actually was needed uh, and i have put uh, floodlighting in along here now floodlighting does exist in 1930 and in the format that we actually recognize it of course it's bulbs and stuff have become more efficient throughout the years and whatever but actually floodlighting as we recognize it does exist so uh yeah that's it i i toyed with the idea of having exposed cables because that's feels like that's what it is um i'm still toying with the idea but i, I have left them out um because all of the images that i've seen of floodlights being attached to wooden beams they're not on they're not on show and that's because of fire risk and stuff they do sort of like hide them away and, and whatever so yeah but again just in the absence and the devoid of detail it feels like i should put it in if if only because it makes it something to look at uh, and then the actual maintenance area here it's got a flat roof and um, i didn't want this to feel the same as the station along the top here i wanted this to feel like it was a shed that was out the back and they didn't make any effort with it whatsoever because it's out the back so yeah that's what i've uh, that's what i've done here and then i've just tidied up this bit uh, all around uh, the outside here now what you have probably noticed is we've now got a proper proper forest so i did say that i needed to put the forest in around the outside and stuff so that's exactly what i've done uh, and we now are actually buried in the forest it is proper tanking my responsiveness it's not tanking the frames thankfully but it's tanking my responsiveness because it's going to draw so much however what it does mean is that from views like this it hides the coaster beautifully i mean there you can't even see it at all so We'll take that. But yeah, this is exactly as I wanted this to sit on the external sight lines because I wanted it to be hidden in amongst all of the trees. So that like fits so nicely. So, so, so nicely. And this is actually a really nice view of, of the coaster. Uh, and then of course, when you um, arrive in from the train from this side, then you just get greeted with the winter garden style station just sitting there on the sight line at the top so i i'm liking how this is placed actually and i'm liking how this how this is looking it's just as, as i keep saying it feels like it's devoid of any detail but that's by design that's exactly how it is so one last look from the top then there we go there is the layout this has been fun it has been fun it's uh even if most of my time this week has been spent researching something i can't find but hey this will do they don't last long anyway, so we're going to be tearing it out in future episodes anyway. So whatever. It is what it is. It doesn't need to be any more than that. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode, guys. I really, really do appreciate it. You know that already. Um, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe and all of that usual jazz. Uh, you know what you're doing. This is not your first rodeo. Thank you, guys. We're going to go for a ride. Until we speak again, please look after yourselves, and I'll see you next week. Bye!